Hey everyone, Chris here from Signs of Life and welcome back to another Stepic Update video. In this video, I'm here to show you all around the new features in the latest update to Stepic, Stepic 1.5. Before we get into all the new features that have been added to Stepic, I'm happy to announce that this update is once again free for all existing users and can be downloaded via the website or updated right inside of Stepic via the application information tab at the top of the plugin. I'm also excited to announce that Stepic is now fully compatible with FL Studio 21. So for those of you who've been waiting patiently for Stepic to work in FL Studio, that wait is finally over. If I had to summarize the Stepic 1.5 update in a couple words, I'd call this the playability update, which brings some highly requested playability features into Stepic to make it feel much more like a playable instrument. Have you ever wished that you could input MIDI notes into Stepic and then map those MIDI notes to different parts of the plugin? Or have you ever wished that you could use Stepic's step sequencer features as a full-blown arpeggiator or chord sequencer? Well, now you can. There are a ton of other new features included in this update, which we're about to get into in this video, but I highly encourage you to check out the detailed release notes included with the downloaded zip file. That being said, let's get into the video, Stepic 1.5, enjoy. So the first feature that we're gonna talk about here today is MIDI play. MIDI play is an extremely powerful and super fun addition to Stepic, and I'm really excited to talk about it here today. So in previous versions of Stepic, you remember the Stepic has always been synced to your host DAW, meaning that you press play inside of your DAW and Stepic starts running just like this. So to turn on MIDI play, just come up here to the top right hand corner of the plugin and click on MIDI play. Now it's important to note here that Stepic's MIDI play settings come set as default, meaning they're fully backwards compatible with all previous versions of Stepic. So if you have some older projects that have Stepic in it, when you click on MIDI play, it's gonna work exactly as it did before. Once you start changing those MIDI play settings, that's where Stepic gets interesting. However, if you wanna load those old settings, you can always click on load defaults. But if you like some of your new MIDI play settings and you wanna save those as defaults for all future instances of Stepic, you can click on save defaults, but you can always go back to load defaults at any time. So as I mentioned, sync to host is the way Stepic has always functioned. So when you click play in your DAW, Stepic will start to play. Now here's what's new. When you change sync to host to note on, now Stepic activates as a note input device, meaning that any note that you input into Stepic, as you can see, I have my Stepic track on record mode, Stepic will start to activate as soon as you start playing. So I can start hitting some keys and Stepic starts running. So as you can see, we have a quantization mode here. Now quantization mode is one of the coolest features I think of MIDI play because when it's set to on or beat sync, Stepic will wait until Stepic is exactly synced on beat to the host DAW, meaning any note that you play or any note that you input into Stepic is always going to be on beat like so. Did you hear that little delay there? That's because Stepic was waiting for the note to become synced up and Stepic started running. This becomes extremely useful when you're starting to play these really wild arpeggios and Stepic, and Stepic will always stay on beat. We also have note latch here, which when you press it on, Stepic will always play running as soon as you press a note. You can press release latch over here next to the MIDI play settings, and Stepic will turn off. So next we're gonna move on to one of the more important and powerful features of MIDI play, the note in mode. Right now you can see it's set to off, but when I click on it, there are three options here. We have transpose, arpeggiator, and chord play. Let's try out transpose for now. So transpose basically works like this. It transposes the entire sequence up or down, depending on whether the played notes are above or below the root note set in stepping. So right now I'm set to F3 natural minor and all of my notes are set to F. So when I start playing this and start moving the keys, Stepic's entire sequence is gonna move up or down depending on what keys I play. Check this out. So as you can see, when I started playing keys that were above F, 
it moved the entire sequence. This gets really interesting when you start inputting some other notes. So I'm gonna start, go ahead and just add some more notes here. And then I'm gonna bring your attention to this new option, note in scale transform. So we have three options here, chromatic, ignore off scale, or to nearest. So chromatic means that the complete chromatic scale is accepted regardless of the scale that is set in stepping. So it doesn't matter what scale that I have up here, every single note on the keyboard is gonna be accepted. Ignore off scale means that it's going to ignore the notes that are off the set scale set in stepic. So any notes that are outside of F natural minor, it's going to ignore those. The third option, which I think is the coolest, is to nearest. So it's going to move those incoming notes that are off scale to the nearest note within the scale. So I could play any single note on the keyboard and it's going to move those notes to that set scale. And now that I've set some more options here and more some more notes, check this out. This is going to sound really interesting. So as you can see, MIDI play is extremely powerful. Now let's move on to the second note in mode, and that's the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator in Stepic at its most basic level works like a regular arpeggiator. So if I just go ahead and play some notes, Stepic is gonna replicate those notes because I haven't changed any of the notes in the step sequencer. Check this out. Right, but that's not all. So as you can see, the arpeggiator mode has obviously the note in scale transform. So I'm gonna leave it in to nearest. So all of my notes are gonna be accepted. We also have an arpeggiator mode here. We have up, down. So I was playing it up before we can use down. Up, down. Down, up. We have random here, right? Where this gets really interesting is when you start changing some of the notes and other aspects of Stepic. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start inputting some notes here. And what Stepic is gonna do, because I have it set on to nearest, it's gonna transform all those notes to the nearest note, right? And I'm also gonna use some octaves here and randomize some of those octaves. I'll put this in random direction. And now when I go ahead and play, because I'm in random mode in the arpeggiator, it's going to randomize all the steps. It's gonna randomize my octaves because I put that in random mode. It's gonna sound pretty amazing. I'm gonna turn up some delay here and some reverb. Let's go ahead and give this a play. Wow. So as you can hear, this is extremely powerful stuff. I mean, I'm inputting notes. You can change notes on the fly. One of my favorite things to do with the arpeggiator mode is turn on the divider so we can divide some of these notes up. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Now, a couple more things before we leave the arpeggiator. There is an arpeggiator range here, and by default, it's set to one octave. Now, when I change that to anything above one octave, we get another option here called note octave movement. And there's three options here. We have full range, which goes through the full range of two octaves. We have an octave up spiral, which is very interesting, and then an octave up down spiral. So I'm gonna choose that and then start playing some notes. And as you're gonna see, this provides us with another creative option for our arpeggios. Check this out. Last but not least, we also have the pitch bend mode here, and right now it's set to off, but we have transpose scale, 
transpose chromatic and transpose chord. These are all very interesting options. So the pitch bend basically means that if you have a pitch bend slider or wheel on your keyboard, you can use the pitch bend to move your whole entire sequence up or down. Check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on transpose scale and it's gonna give me a pitch bend range of plus or minus 12 semitones. And I'll go ahead and start using the pitch bend on my push to start transposing this entire scale in real time. Check this out. So the final note in mode that we're gonna cover here in this video is chord play. Now chord play takes your normal monophonic output of Stepic and transforms it into some really interesting polyphonic sequences. I'll show you what I mean. So I have another track here that has chord play activated. And when I activate chord play in the MIDI play settings, the chords button shows up here on the top left. Now. I have a chord that's sustained all the way across our timeline. And what Stepic is gonna do is take those three notes and it's gonna transpose it based on the sequence above. Now, this sequence is moving at whole notes and it's only eight steps. So if you ever wanted Stepic to become your own chord sequencer, now you could do that with chord play. Check this out. Add some arpeggio on top. One more thing to note here before we leave MIDI play is if you want to control the amount of randomization that Stepic is doing with MIDI play, you can always do so in Stepic's main settings page. You'll find that up here on the top left. By clicking on settings, you're going to see that we have a random note range, random octave range, random duration range. These can all be customly set. So it, by default, this comes in at negative two and plus two. I like mine to be zero and plus one, and therefore giving me much more musical results when I'm playing with the arpeggiator in Stepic. So I encourage you to change these settings if you need to. And that's just another way you can make Stepic more musical using MIDI play. The next feature we're gonna take a look at is MIDI mapping. Now, as you can see, there are now five icons up here on the top left. I'm gonna click on the last one over here on the right. And this is the MIDI mapping page. Now, as you can see, we have the ability to switch patterns one through 16 using MIDI's or CC or release the latch notes. This comes in really handy if you wanna switch patterns on the fly and still have access to other keys on your keyboard. I'll show you what I mean. So uh, right here, you can see there's a map button next to controller CC and note number. So what I'm gonna do is play from F0 up the scale on my keyboard, and then I'm going to map each note to a different pattern. So I'm just gonna hit map and play F0, and as you can see, F0 shows up here to switch pattern one. I'm gonna hit map here on the next key, map here on the next key, map here on the next key, and the next one. Now that I've done that, what I can do is I can switch between all five patterns that I have programmed in the Stepic. This becomes really handy, say in a live situation where you're playing live and you wanna have access to the upper regions on the keyboard or any keys that you want, and you can still switch between the patterns. You don't even have to look at it. It becomes really intuitive and it's really easy to use. Check this out. Now it's important to note here that all of Stepic's instances can be mapped independently, meaning you can have one Stepic instance mapped to one set of keys and the other one is mapped to another one. You can set these as defaults. It's really an amazing feature and I'm super excited that they've added it to Stepic. So the last feature that I'd like to mention is Stepic now fully supports MIDI through. By coming up here to the top left, you can see there's a through button. You can click this and you can individually select which MIDI messages you'd like to be passed through Stepic, such as aftertouch, pitch bend, mod wheel, controller change by CC number or program change or note on and off. It's a really handy feature and I'm super excited that they brought it here to Stepic.
as you can see, I'm using my mod wheel and all of those mod wheel messages are being passed right through to Vital on the other end. So that's it. All in all, Stepic 1.5 is an extremely useful and playable update that will hopefully inspire you to make better music than you've ever dreamed of before. I wanna thank Jens at Device Meister for having me on here today. And if you wanna find out more about me, you can do so by checking out my YouTube channel where I teach ambient music tutorials and sound design. You can also check out my brand new website where you can book time with me for ambient coaching, download free stuff, and so much more. I'll leave the links down below in the description for both of those. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.